An embarrassing uh, revelation for the Miles government in the last 24 hours after the Australian newspaper through Freedom of Information has revealed secret taxpayer funded polling costing over a million dollars. Now that polling included apparently results that sounded the death knell for the former Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk last December, pointing out how unpopular she was and there was no way she was going to win an election there in October this year. Joining us now, our Friday regular former Queensland Premier Campbell Newman. Uh, you had a bit of rain up there today, Campbell. Steve, it's been extraordinary, actually. Uh, by about 9 o'clock this morning, we'd had 200 millimetres uh, in, the, in the sort of the central part of Brisbane uh, just overnight. So, yeah, the place is awash. And I only just got here on time, by the way, for your show, thanks to the traffic gridlock that then arises in Brisbane. A pleasure. Now, every party does polling. You would have been involved in polling yourself in your political career. But to most political parties in state governments spend this much money and then try and keep it secret? Yeah, look, it... It is, it is a bit of a racket these days that governments engage in and, you know, you, you, true confessions. We probably bit of, did a bit of that in relation to checking what the community thought about uh, the sale and, uh, of, of assets or the leasing of assets. So I've got to be fair about that. But I think the thing is that it really did show that uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk was terribly on the nose in October, November last year. Uh, and that prompted her removal uh, by the unions, of course. And uh, it now remains to be seen how Stephen Miles is going with the reset. The thing I'm interested in, and particularly is that even in October, November last year, the Labor government was seen as being very weak on dealing with youth crime and the cost of living. Uh, only one in five, or less than one in five Queenslanders thought they were doing a good job on youth crime. And frankly, as we've uh, been talking about on your show, uh, it's only got worse since then. Yeah, I don't know how anyone would answer a question about whether the Labor government in Queensland or the Labor government in Victoria, in fact, are dealing with youth crime in a proper way. They simply have lost control of the streets. And we, you know, night after night after night, and you had that own problem in your own street. It's just an ongoing issue. They don't seem to have an answer. Well, they don't. And, you know, we've also seen media reports in the Courier-Mail uh, in the last uh, 24 hours or so of the state of play within the Queensland Police Service. Uh, I've called previously on your show for the, the uh, police uh, commissioner to, to really stand up and show leadership. Well, the Courier Mail is reporting that uh, there's uh, you know, rumblings in the senior ranks against the commissioner, uh, but also then down in the rank and file, you know, there's, there's people on stress leave, people not wanting to turn up to work, um, there's also, uh, you know, great dissatisfaction about the backup that they're being given from the top brass. So, you know, this has to be sorted out. And what does what does Miles do as Premier this week? He, he tries to go off and have a, a, of a, of a distraction by uh, to the agenda by uh, sort of talking about uh, changes to, to laws, to perhaps quite worthy changes to laws to decriminalise sort of aspects of uh, uh, sex work. Uh, but, but Queenslanders want the youth crime issue dealt with, Steve. They all love a diversion, Campbell, as you know. Just before we get on to the homeless crisis, I want to talk to you about rents and what that costs in Queensland. Just talking to Ted O'Brien there, uh, for, with your political experience, do you believe that the Federal Coalition will have the bottle to go to an election arguing for nuclear? Well, it sounds like it, mate, and I think it's, uh, as you said, it's, uh, it is now a contest of ideas, which is really exciting. Uh, I really hope they do. Uh, nuclear t nuclear's time has come. I've been an advocate for some time, and I, I think that across the political divide, by the way, that there are plenty of sensible people who get that we won't sort of reduce carbon uh, emissions by sort of uh, windmills and... Uh, you know, solar panels. It just won't happen. It's too expensive. And the, the idea of putting in small modular reactors uh, in sort of key uh, locations across the national grid where there were previously coal-fired power stations makes a lot of sense. And I think Ted O'Brien's on a winner. Uh, but again, I really point out, you know, you've got people from the AWU who have supported this. You've got people who are, you know, card-carrying members of the Labor Party who believe this is the right thing to do. It's only people like um, Bowen and uh, the Prime Minister 
that are so dug in in, a, in an ideological sense that they won't uh, actually do what's right and practical. Yeah, bring on the contest, I say. I think one of the issues in the country at the moment that is heartbreaking, and, you know, I'm a fairly hard character, but I, I just feel really sad when I, I see homeless people in the streets, no matter where they are. Up in Queensland, that you've got, a, like the rest of the country, a rental crisis. There was a story this week about one woman who had shut down her cafe. I think she had a cafe uh, on the coast somewhere last June. She's been homeless ever since, and she's now resorted to ringing old school friends she hasn't spoken to in years to find out if she can sleep on their couch. Surely we've got as a country to do something about this. It's just, it's a crisis that we have to fix. Well, absolutely. And, you know, like Lisa and I were going to a function in the CBD of Brisbane last night and, you know, it's quite confronting the, the, the literally rough sleepers on the streets of Brisbane and we barely had any of that uh, going back sort of 10 years ago. And what, what concerns me, though, Steve, is that the, the, all the talk by the politicians is, is the wrong sort of talk. The, the, the answers to the housing crisis are actually about deregulation, less red tape in bureaucracy. We need to free up land supply, both greenfields and also, you know, vertical, you know, real estate opportunities. We need to cut back on the red tape in terms of building a new home. We need to actually get councils to get on the... Uh, put on the gas pedal and get approvals through the system. And we need to take off the shackles in terms of the rental market. There are stories now coming out of Argentina that that new president, since he has removed a lot of the red tape and issues around uh, you know, landlords and, and, and how the rental market works, that actually the rental market has freed up and prices for... You know, rents have come down. Uh, now, you know, those are the sorts of things we need to do. But in Australia, uh, with, uh, you know, the left wing that uh, uh, sort of governments that are in the ascendancy, we're seeing all the wrong policy prescriptions. And, and it's a really worrying thing. I think it could get worse before it ultimately gets better. And just finally, I mean, I was walking past some, uh, some government, state government-owned uh, housing, which is, uh, you know, housing for for the people who can't afford to pay full rent. Many of these places are empty. Do you reckon, Campbell, any state government administration in recent times has done an audit of how many of the properties they own are actually empty? Look, that's a really good question. And <clears throat> frankly, I, I don't know the answer to that. But what I can tell you is there's a problem here in Queensland. Yeah, when I was uh, a Premier, for example, we had... Um, a great deal of trouble trying to convince the Labor Party, and indeed some of the um, the, the, the sort of the, the groups and the NGOs in the space, that we needed to have a policy where, say, if there was a, a person, uh, an elderly person, uh, who was living in a house capable of you know, accommodating a family of four, that it was a, it was right and appropriate that we actually offer that property up to a to a family and try and get that person who was living alone into. Uh, more suitable accommodation. You, you've got to have flexibility. The other big problem, by the way, and, and this is in Queensland, I can take you within two, two or three kilometres of this studio where there are all sorts of uh, Queensland uh, government properties, vacant land and properties that are just sitting there that should be being used. You know, literally two kilometres from here, there is a vast uh, block of land that is vacant. And, yeah, you know, it's been vacant for the entire nine years of the Palaszczuk and Miles government. And, and yet there's a crisis. Yeah, my... So they can do a yeah, lot better. Yeah, my point exactly. I think they can. Someone needs to do that audit. Campbell Newman, always great to catch up with you on a Friday. Thanks very much for your time.